Imagine if military aircraft could maneuver with very little noise and stay airbound for longer. This capability would provide a crucial advantage over any adversary and could soon be a possibility using hybrid electric technology. It would make aircraft harder to detect and would reduce the reliance on conventional fossil-based aviation fuel. Fossil fuel has been around for many, many years and if we uh, look at the engines that we in actual fact have got within the military, the technology itself is well advanced, well understood. The problems we have certainly from a military perspective is that they are noisy and therefore that means that they're not particularly stealthy and therefore can be detected. They are heat engines and as a result of that they also offer an IR signature. So all of these combined mean that from military applications there are some potential benefits from looking at alternative propulsion and power solutions. NATO's science and technology arm has gathered together scientists and engineers from various NATO nations to research aspects associated with the design and operation of future aircraft, utilising hybrid electric and coupled aeropropulsion technologies. If hybrid electric technology is adopted, we see preliminary evidence, things like improving the propulsion performance, Military aircraft, a lot of them need to be agile in terms of manoeuvrability. So not only do they have to climb and cruise in a steady manner, but there are many occasions where they need to abruptly perform a manoeuvre. And hybrid electric technology could shore up that aspect of things. Hybrid electric is anything that will take a traditional power plant and combine that then with one or a number of electric motors to provide both propulsive force and also power for the various consumers. They may be radars, they may be infrared sensing devices, um, a number of other activities. All you're doing effectively is replacing some of that power generation and propulsive force by a combination of potentially either a smaller main power plant and an additional electric motor and possibly from battery storage rather than fuel, so you might have a combination of that. While a lot of research and development is being carried out on energy storage using batteries or energy conversion using generators, for hybrid electric architectures, there is yet an alternate source of energy being investigated. Another technology that's rather nascent but shows a lot of promise, a lot of time is being invested, is what's called fuel cells. And the idea here is somewhat similar to the battery chemical reaction, a fuel cell produces electricity from a liquid fuel, like a liquid hydrogen, for instance. And we feel that fuel cells could be a, a good way to go in the future. It's a, an embryonic technology as such, but we feel that there's a lot of promise there because the, the fuel cell produces zero emissions. I mean, the only emission a fuel cell generates is water as such. So if we can develop the technology to the requisite power uh, and efficiencies that we're expecting, uh, we feel fuel cells could be a good way as we look forward. From combat to surveillance missions, air assets perform a multitude of tasks to ensure mission success, delivering the three paramount principles of air power, speed, reach and height. Uh, for the foreseeable future, I primarily see applications of uh, hybrid electrical propulsion systems on surveillance aircraft. Uh, for example, on unmanned aerial vehicles flying very high, flying very silent, and maybe also producing their own electrical energy. So there are lots of different mission types that we need to undertake where we deliver assets by air. So resupply is one, but troop insertion is another big area. That could be traditional forces or special forces. So being able to do that in a much stealthier fashion by having uh, more electric air vehicles would be of benefit. A standard transport airplane contains two major electrical circuits and one alternate backup circuit. The two circuits, one on each side of the aircraft, are linked to two generators. It's these generators that produce electricity using the mechanical energy supplied by each of the engines. Although in principle, military air vehicles are similarly configured, as we look into the future, an increasing amount of electricity will become mission critical. The F-35 is carrying about one megawatt not to power the engines, but to power all the weapon system that goes there. The one megawatt is about what you have 
on a 787. So um, electricity is getting more and more needed on military aircraft. The weapon system that go on airplanes is growing. If I look at all the consumers on board, that's not only computers or navigational systems, jammers for example, or self-defense systems, they consume a lot of electrical power. The second one is, if we are in need of so much electrical power, in my view it doesn't make no sense to first convert the energy from fossil fuel to mechanical rotation and then put the mechanical rotation into electrical power. We lose so much in this chain, so let's go for electric. The various options for the architecture of a hybrid electric propulsion system will be determined by the mission that air vehicle has to undertake. Essentially, the, the business end of all of this is the performance of the aircraft. Is there a requisite rate of climb? How fast the, uh, the aircraft should climb? Or how fast should the aircraft have in terms of maximum cruise capability, speed capability? Or it could even be its takeoff distance. So how short we can make the takeoff distance. And depending on those performance criteria, that will decide the mix of conventional combustion-based chemical fuel versus that of electrochemical or fuel cell-based. And what we call that mixture, that ratio of which over the other, uh, we call that as a degree of hybridization. This is calculated in real time as the mission is being performed according to what type of function you need to deliver and what requisite performance you need. Hybrid electric systems could be set up so that the battery element recharges itself, providing a crucial additional source of energy to meet any unexpected performance requirements during the mission, as well as enabling a much quicker turnaround of the aircraft prior to the next mission. There's a, generally a generator that's connected to the, the, the thermal engine, the heat engine, and that uh, generator converts the mechanical power from the engine into electrical power. Well, if you're in a situation where you're flying and performing the mission and there's an excess of this mechanical power, you've got nothing to do with it, you will take that opportunity to convert that into electrical power and then we could use that to replenish the battery. The more we can utilise hybrid technology systems, the less need we'll have for fossil fuels, which of course is better for the environment. The governments of all NATO nations are facing increased pressure to do more to tackle climate change. It's putting militaries under the microscope. Aviation is responsible for 700 million tonnes of carbon dioxide emissions by itself per year. The problem is that aerospace operations are expected to go larger in numbers. Demand is increasing a lot and therefore the emissions are going to increase a lot. The other thing is we are flying at an altitude. so other emissions such as the water vapor that might seem benign uh, at an altitude they actually contribute to greenhouse gas emissions so if we can manage to lower the emission down and ultimately go to the electric fully electric systems then we would be doing a very good thing for our for our environment and and our home planet Although uh, we do emphasize areas that the military would like to improve, the military itself and NATO nations, a priority for them is the reduction of uh, anthropogenic impact, so climate change due to CO2, uh, due to nitrous oxides and particulates. So yes, in the military today, as part of the equation in the procurement process, so thinking of procuring new equipment or material, part of that equation, a serious consideration is given to climate change. And hybrid electric technologies bodes itself well as part of that decision-making process. In the civil aviation world, great progress is being made in the field of electric-powered flight. In December 2019 in Canada, a Beaver seaplane made history, becoming the world's first electrically-powered commercial passenger aircraft to take to the skies. Then in May of 2020, the first flight test of an all-electric propulsion system on a larger Cessna 208B aircraft was conducted over Washington State in the United States. As we're looking at electrified propulsion for, for aircraft, it is a tremendously exciting area, but an urgent area, I think, too, when you look at the, the challenges of sustainability of aviation. 
the, the need to ensure that we are driving methods of, of propulsion powering these aircraft that are far more energy efficient and environmentally sustainable and invaluable. These sorts of forums where we're able to share the information across so many different organizations that are tackling these challenges um, is vital. I think we're at a sort of a cusp now where the technology is being really advanced in the civil sector. Again, the likes of uh, Amazon and drone technologies and autonomous vehicles, that has sort of escalated dramatically over the last 10 to 15 years. Now, the demand, I think, for sort of those sort of drone technologies at a larger size for military purposes will initially be delivered, I think, for surveillance purposes and getting longer endurance. As the technology improves, then we will try and identify what the military delta is and being able to do this at a much larger scale, potentially for things like logistics delivery and troop insertions going forward. If the low observability is emphasised, it's dispatch reliability, minimising downtime, the way the geopolitical conflict situations are arising, what it counts is to have material, equipment available at a moment's notice and adaptable to the situation you'll find yourself in. We feel that hybrid electric technology is going to be a key aspect of delivering on such missions.